is honors algebra 2 pre-calculus. We're doing 10.8 in pre-calc, which is polar graphs or graphing polar equations, uh, just semantics. So uh, anyway, uh, in example one, we're going to graph r equals 3 cosine theta. Now we're going to do this in two ways. We're going to do this by hand and we're going to do it on a calculator. Uh, even as someone who does a lot of math, if I have a choice, I don't sketch polar graphs by hand. It's much easier to graph them on a calculator. Uh, it's pretty time consuming to draw a polar graph. So, uh, and sometimes they're pretty complicated looking. So, uh, like I said, if I were you, I would make sure I know how to do both so that if I were required to graph my hand on a test, I could, but also I could use a calculator if I was not required to do stuff by hand because it's much, much easier. So that said, let's go ahead and start by walking through this by hand and then I'll show you how to do it on a calculator. So. As a bit of a shortcut, right, uh, trig functions, all of the trig functions, uh, all of Sokotoa and Chosha Kao, if you figure out the reciprocal versions, uh, they're all periodic functions, meaning they repeat over a certain amount of time called a period. So if you know the basic period of a function, like, say, cosine, like if you know that in radians the period of cosine is 2 pi, then it's easy to say, hey, I'm just going to plot some easy points from 0 to 2 pi, uh, and that should give me enough to graph my curve. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, right? So uh, I know that the period of a cosine function is 2 pi. Uh, now, if it had been cosine of something in front of the theta, like cosine of 2 theta, then my period would be 2 pi divided by that 2, right? But here, it's just cosine theta, so the period's 2 pi. So I'm going to pick all the points on the unit circle, basically. Now, an interesting side note is that you might, well, you might not want to pick all the points on the unit circle, and I can kind of walk you through why uh, in a minute. But so... It's a lot of points if you pick all the points in the unit circle. So let's say I go ahead and start picking. So here are my thetas, right? Um, and actually, let's inch over a little, and we're going to make our lives a little easier. We're going to do two of these tables, okay? And I'm going to do one of them. Uh, so, so my r would be 3 cosine theta. My r is 3 cosine theta. All right, so I'm going to try and squeeze half of the unit circle in the first table and half in the second. So 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, right? That's the end of my quadrant 1, right? So, so I'm just going to put a little star that that's the end of quadrant 1, right? Uh, and then uh, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, and then pi. That's the end of my second quadrant, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and loop pi over two in with the first quadrant just because it's easier and so on. Uh, and then if I pick up after pi, I get seven pi over six, uh, five pi over four, four pi over three, three pi over two, which is going to be the end of that quadrant three, right? Um, again, three pi over two could be included in either quadrant, but just for argument's sake. Uh, five pi over three, and uh, seven pi over four, and 11 pi over 6, and then back to 2 pi, which uh, is the same spot as 0, but is the end of that quadrant, right? So these are my, like, sort of my corners, right? Um, so if you're graphing polar stuff by hand, it does require a pretty good knowledge of the unit circle, so good times if you don't know your unit circle. Uh, remember that this is basically saying 3 times the x coordinate on your unit circle, so x unit circle, right? That's, that's what the cosine would be. So this is going to be 3 times a 1, which is a 3, Right? This will be 3 times a root 3 over 2. So 3 root 3 over 2, which is not awesome, but it's just what I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, this is going to be a 3 times a root 2 over 2. And this is going to be a 3 times a half. So, uh, so that one, at least, you probably are going to think of excuse me, as 1.5 when you're graphing. And it's going to be a 3 times a 0, so it's just a 0. Uh, all the pi over 3s, the cosine values are a half, right? but this will be in, in quadrant 2, so it's going to be a negative 1.5, because it'll be negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5. It's going to be a negative 3 root 2 over 2, which we already saw up here, but now with a negative, and this will be a negative 3 root 3 over 3, which again we saw up here, but it'll be a negative, and this will be a negative 3, because it's 3 times negative 1. Uh, this is going to be another one of the 3 root 3 over 2s, right? But it'll be negative, because we're in quadrant 3, so x and y are both negative, and this will be another one of the 3 root 2 over 2s. Uh, again, negative. This will be another of the three halves, which is negative 1.5, and this is going to be another zero, right? This will be another of the three halves, but this time we're back to being positive because we're in quadrant four. Uh, this will be a three times a root two over two again. So you notice I'm getting the exact same values over and over and over again. This will be a three root three over two, and this will be back to being a three. Okay, so super good times. Uh, so now let's sketch what the graph looks like by hand, right? So if I Give myself my really bad version of polar graph paper. Notice that the biggest value I ever had is a 3. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 
one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so uh, the way we make polar graph paper if you're stuck making it by hand is you plot your axes and then you kind of make circles, concentric circles around the origin or the pole. Uh, it's the pole and polar. It's called the origin and Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. Okay, uh, and then I would make the little like dotted lines for the angles. Now the easiest ones to make are the 45s because they cut each quadrant in half. And then uh, I can make the 30s and the 60s. Notice that they do make a straight line with the 30 and the 60 in the opposite quadrant, right? Uh, and the, the 60 and the 30. Okay, this is why I suggested that you bother to print the polar graph paper. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot these points. We'll do it in blue. So at theta is zero, meaning on the polar axis, I'm supposed to go out to three. So there's my first point, that one's done. Now, um, it might be worth typing into a calculator what uh, three root three over two is, just so you have a rough estimate, right? Um, you could also estimate this on your own. Root three is like a 1.7, which means root three over two is like a 0.85 approximately, right? And if you tripled that, let's see, that would be 2.55 probably. So this is probably like a 2.55, give or take. So let's do three uh, root three over two. Yeah, I said 2.55, it's 2.59 because I was rounding and that's fine. So if you had to figure out where this is, this is like 2.59, it's a little bit more than two and a half. So at the next spot at five or six, I should be at two and a little over two and a half, which will be here, right? Um, root two over two, uh, so, so root 2 is a 1.4-ish, right? So root 2 over 2 is a 0.7, which means 3 times root 2 over 2 is about a 2.1. But again, you could, um, you could just hit second enter and turn that 3 into a 2. Uh, yep, so, so I said 2.1 and it's going to be 2.12, etc. So it's still past the 2 mark, but, uh, but not as much, right? And then, uh, 1.5, right, which will be between the, uh, 1 and 2 mark, right? Uh, and then at pi over 2, I should be at 0, right? And then at 2 pi over 3, which is this angle right here, I'm supposed to go backwards 1.5 units. So that will be here, right? And then at 3 pi over 4, I'm supposed to go backwards that approximately 2.12, so here, right? And then if I go back... Uh, one more time now at five pi over six, I'm supposed to go backwards that 2.6 ish, right? And then at pi, I'm supposed to go backwards three. So I've actually made it back to that spot. So it turns out that here I have already gone the entire way around. So I didn't actually have to give, uh, I didn't actually have to go the full period to get this full graph. Cause if I, if, if you watch when I go through these, I'm gonna repeat exactly the same points. Just like I found that this was a double point of a point I already had. If I try going to 7 pi over 6 and walking backwards 2.6, I'm going to hit there. If I go to 5 pi over 4 and walk backwards, I'm going to hit here, right? Uh, if I walk to 4 pi over 3 and walk backwards 1.5, I'm going to hit here. Uh, at 3 pi over 2, 0 is here. And you can see that I'm basically retracing all of these points and getting... So essentially, this is a circle, right? So this is a circle that has a diameter of 3 and seems to be centered at basically, uh, if we were talking about... Cartesian coordinates, this is centered at the point 1.5 comma 0, right? So like in Cartesian or in rectangular coordinates, this is a circle with center at 1.5 comma 0 and a radius of 1.5. But uh, again, not all polar graphs are convenient Cartesian graphs as well. Some of them are a lot more complicated. So, uh, and we'll see that as we move forward. So anyway, that was graphing by hand. So let's walk through what this would look like if I were graphing this on a calculator. So if I'm on a calculator, right, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mode, right, and you'll notice that I, I want to be in radian, but I want to then go down to where it says function pair polar sequence, and I want to go to polar, right? So I'm pick polar. Now when I go to my y equals, and I'm going to clear this stuff out, uh, I, instead of having y equals, I'm actually going to have an r equals. And now this, this independent variable button, right, that is x comma t comma theta comma n, well now it's going to be a theta. So I'm going to type in 3 cosine of theta, and I can close those parentheses. Now before I graph, if I want to make my window look like this, right, what I can do is I can go to my window and say, hey, I don't, you'll notice that my, x, my theta min and theta max are exactly what I naturally picked. So in zoom standard, theta min and theta max go from uh, 0 to pi over 2, which is a full unit circle, and that's pretty standard. Just like we saw in parametric, you don't want to screw with the theta step. 
Uh, a bigger theta step is going to give you a really weird chunky graph, and a smaller theta step is going to make your calculator have to think really, really hard. Because remember that those theta steps are like moments that you're taking a snapshot of where the particle is located. And if you take too many snapshots, then it takes forever to graph. And if you don't take enough snapshots, then your graph doesn't look, out, look circular. It ends up looking like some weird chunky thing with a bunch of lines. So generally, the short rule is just don't screw with the theta step, right? Leave the theta step where it is. Now, if I want to make my graph look like this graph, though, I could change my x min and max to go from negative 3 to 3. And I could do the same thing with my y. And that should make it look sort of like my graph. And if I graph now, you'll see that it's a circle. Now, you might say, Hogan, I'm pretty sure that looks like an ellipse, like that looks like an oval. Well, the reason that's true is because your calculator screen is physically not a square. So you put a square window in where this, this direction is 3, and so is this direction, and this is 3, and this is 3. But since the window is not square, it means that the ticks that occur on the y-axis are closer together than the ones on the x-axis. So the way around that, if you really hate it, is to pick zoom and go to square. And if you pick zoom square, your calculator will adjust so that it makes the uh, scale on the x and y axis the same, and you can see clearly that this is a circle. So uh, again, that's how you'd graph by hand and how you'd graph on a calculator. You can see that it is much, much easier to graph uh, by calculator than by hand.